So I've been learning how to make pasta from scratch. Now I gotta figure out how to make it green. And I'm making lasagna. That's also gonna be green. Buongiorno. I'm just not gonna give up without a fight. And we're back. Grab your weapon of choice. Mine's gonna be Marcella Hazan's The Essentials of Classic Italian Cooking. Love this book. I think I'm ready to make this baked green lasagna with meat sauce, which is bolognese style. We've covered that on the show. And yes, you heard me, I'm saying bolognese now, thanks to this comment section of mine. You corrected me. Uh, but that being said, it does say lasagna here, and all my life I've said lasagna. So I looked it up, and there's a difference. Lasagna refers to the singular pasta that's gonna go into the lasagna, which is the multiple layers of it. That being said, I'm gonna stick with saying lasagna today. I hope that's cool. Uh, reason being, that's just what I've been trained to say, and you know, I'm just gonna end up saying it anyway, so I just wanna prepare you. Properly made lasagna consists of several layers of delicate, nearly weightless pasta, spaced by layers of savory, but not overbearing filling. So to sum it all up, I got three big things to do here. The meat sauce, the green pasta, and a bechamel. Let's get to work. Okay, so it's important to do this all in a proper order here that's gonna, you know, make sense. So plan your day accordingly. Yep. So when we're building something such as like a meat sauce in Italian cooking, you gotta build it from the bottom up. And there's three key techniques that you should follow in order to master Italian taste. Those three techniques are battuto, soffritto, insaporire. And we just completed the first one, which is striking the ingredients on the cutting board. With a knife. Medium heat. Three tablespoons of butter. And a tablespoon of vegetable oil. Half a cup of chopped onions. So this is one of the key techniques right here. Second one, soffritto which is essentially sauteing these onions until they become translucent. Flavor, right? Two third cup of each, chopped celery and chopped carrots. Cooking for two minutes. And now we move on to key technique number three, the one I can't pronounce. Uh, I'm not gonna even try to. This is how you say it. Insaporire. Cool. Three quarter pound of ground chuck beef. A large pinch of salt. And, come here. A few cracks of black pepper. So keep it stirring and cook it until it has lost its red raw color. Okay, so here is, I guess, a very controversial step, but I'm adding in a cup of whole milk. Hey, Marcella tells me to, so I gotta listen. Uh, the comment section lit up the last time I did this, but hey, this is what she says, so that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, it's gonna tenderize the meat, I believe. Okay, so the milk needs to evaporate very slowly. So on a gentle simmer, it takes some time. I think last time it took like 15 minutes or something. Hold that mag, and I'm gonna grate in around 1 8 teaspoon worth. Till I say when. When. A cup of dry white wine. And this also needs to simmer away until it's evaporated. Think fast. I got a can of imported Italian plum tomatoes. Cup and a half worth. Is that gonna be everything? No, it wasn't. Ah, just use it all. Instead of chopping these tomatoes up, I like to squeeze. Okay, hi, you are recording? Yeah, great. <laughs> so I think the wine has officially simmered away. It's been like 15, 20 minutes. And uh, yeah, I think that's just fat. That's just the rendered beef fat, the butter, the oil, but that's not wine, so wow. This is the full can of tomatoes, three cups worth. And yeah, this is about one and a half cups more than she's recommending. But even last time when I was making this thing, um, I found that it needed a little more tomatoes. So this, this is my own little personal thing here. Okay, I'm going through something. I'm gonna have this coat all the ingredients and the tomatoes need to start simmering. Keep this uncovered and you know, feel free to season along the way. And if you need to add a little more water, if it thickens up, you know. Feel free to do all of that. Turn down the heat and with just the intermittent bubble breaking through, I need to keep this simmering at the laziest of simmers 
for around three hours or more. While that simmers away, let me introduce and thank today's sponsor, Maiden. So when it comes to Maiden, I've been crossing my fingers that they would finally find me on the internet and send me some of their products. Cause I see in other videos and online and I'm always like, well, I want that. And uh, well, they sent me some stuff. Now, Maiden designs professional quality products for the home cook that have the seal of approval from multiple Michelin star restaurants. And now from me, some guy in his kitchen who has cooked a few Michelin star dishes to half decent results too, at best. So I cook with nonstick pans often, makes it easier. But I do wonder how safe it can be, especially because I opt for the lesser priced option. And I know it's eventually gonna lose its nonstick power. Here's an egg. Now I have Maiden's non-stick collection that lasts 10 times longer than their competitors. And they pass a third party's health, safety, and non-toxic test in both the US and in Europe. Also, these bad boys can go in the oven up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. All I gotta do to clean is wipe them out. There, clean. Back over here. Not only is Maiden sponsoring my content, which I'm thrilled about, but I get to use this cookware regularly. Feel slick doing it and one step closer to looking like I know what I'm doing. Check out the nonstick collection and Maiden's other cookware by using the link in my description to save on your order. Thank you, Maiden, and let's get back to the video. Okay, so the thing with green pasta, I keep hyping this thing up, but uh, I didn't even know it was really a thing. I don't think I've ever seen it before. I'm not familiar with it. That's not true at all, actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, I've seen it plenty. So I don't know what the hell I'm going on about. Anyway, I never knew why it was green or how it is green. So we're about to find out what the mystery ingredient is. Please come on down. The mystery ingredient. The mystery ingredient is spinach. Six ounces worth and yeah, it just fell on the floor, but good thing I'm washing it. I've had it soaking in cold water for the past few minutes. I've since drained it. And what do I gotta do, Jules? No, you're not Jules, you're Marcella. Put the spinach in a pan with no more water than what clings to it. Sprinkle in a quarter teaspoon of salt. Cover the pan. Stove top. The range on a medium heat for five minutes. Woo! Drain the wilted spinach. When cool enough to handle, I need to squeeze it to force out, whoa, any of the remaining liquid. There's quite a bit. Let's say that I got around 99% of it. No, a little more. Chop it finely, but do not use the food processor as that will dry out too much moisture. So we're gonna make the pasta. And I require two eggs, which means I need 200 grams of flour. And I'm using the double zero flour. So 200 grams of flour onto my surface. I'm gonna form that into a mound to make a big well. One egg in, two eggs in. And to greenify this, the spinach. Now I still gotta, still gotta work those eggs in, so maybe I should have. <sighs> Obviously you have to beat the eggs in first, as if you're making an omelet <laughs> with spinach in it, a spinach omelet. Once the eggs have been beaten, now in goes the spinach. For around a minute like this. So if you draw the flour closest to the eggs in first, and just kind of get that on top before you start drawing everything forward, uh, there's no leakage. <laughs> and I don't want any leakage. I don't like the leakage. So uh, we're avoiding that by this new tactic. It's working great. Another plus side is that we can control how much flour I'm adding into this thing. Using my fingers and my palms, I'm gonna work the flour and the eggs together, but only using as much flour as necessary. I don't think I'm gonna need all of this. So let's kind of scrape up any of this stuff, any of these caked on floury bits here. Okay, so let me press my thumb in there if it comes out clean. Okay, we can move on to the next step. With the heel of my hand, press firmly down on the dough, kind of flatten it a bit, and then I'm gonna fold it in half. Clockwise, half turn, and repeat. Keep the surface floured, of course. Eight minutes later, I got a dough ball. So I gotta wrap that up in plastic wrap and have it rest in the fridge for like half an hour. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, hello, is move on to this bechamel sauce, which is a white sauce of butter, flour, and milk 
that help bind the components of scores of Italian dishes, such as green lasagna. Three cups of milk in a small saucepan. I'm gonna bring this to just the point of boiling. While heating the milk, da 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 da. Okay. Okay, we're gonna need another saucepan. I have made a bunch of bechamel sauces on Jamie and Julia, uh, but this isn't Jamie and Julia, so this is a different way of doing it. I'm Same but different, I guess. Once the butter has completely melted, I'm gonna add in three tablespoons of flour. I'm stirring constantly for two minutes, and if we just zoom out really quickly, we can see the mess I just made. And add in some extra flour there because you missed the pan. I'm gonna add in a couple tablespoons of the nearly boiling milk. Stir that in first. A couple more. Continue the process until you've added around half a cup of milk. So add another half a cup of milk. Keep mixing it in. Another half a cup. You see the pattern here? Just keep it going until it's all mixed together with the flour and the butter. You know what, I think it needs a good whisking. Just a hoot of salt, which is around a quarter teaspoon. Turn down the heat to a dull roar. Continue to stir until it has become creamy and thickened. Hell yeah. It took around 10 minutes, but we got there. Whoa. Into a double boiler to stay warm. I summon thee. Chromeo Alfredo, my pasta machine. And let's just clamp it down. Resume the usual position. Hello. I've been making pasta so often these days that I have this whole thing like memorized. So I need to cut this up into six pieces. 56, pretty close. Great, they're all fairly even Steven. Okay, there we go. So the dough needs to be 10 inches long. My test strip, it is as wide and as thin as Chromio will allow. And uh, that looks great. This was what I had to cut off from it. That doesn't look as great. But uh, yeah, we'll work on that. But here we are. Uh, I need to let this uh, pasta dryer. And let's just kind of hang this first strip up here, just like so, and same with this right here. So let's just do a quick recap, and then for the rest of it, it will just be repeating. So I'm gonna flatten this out with the palm of my hand, fold it once, fold it twice, and then I'm gonna feed the pasta through this machine, notching it up to something thinner each turn, but keeping it as wide as possible. Keep it wide, keep it floured, and away we go. I've had a lot of people tell me that I should pick up the uh, Silver Fox pasta attachment, uh, which is basically doing this job for you. I gotta be honest though, there is nothing wrong with a little manual <laughs> pasta making. You know, builds character. I've had these air drying, so they are a little easier to manage right now. 10 inches long and four and a half inches wide. That's five inches, I see, I see, I see. Four and a half inches wide. Okay, that's exactly what she has in mind. Done, check it out. Air drying and ready to go. I love to see it, voila. I have a bowl, no, thank you. A, of cold water with a couple ice cubes in there. I'm gonna keep that next to the range where my, oh, there you go. Five quarts, five liters worth of boiling water right here. Add a tablespoon of salt into the boiling water and then I gotta bring that back up to a boil. Cook these very briefly for just seconds after the water has been brought back up to a boil. Four or five of these pasta strips at a time. And once the water's back up to a boil, let's remove this. Come on, come on. And into my bowl of cold water. Let's do the rest of them. Rinse them all under cold water. Sorry. What? Rub them, rub them delicately as though you were doing fine hand laundry. Rub them delicately? Oh, I get it. I gotta rub them delicately under the cold running water. 
She says to squeeze each strip gently, but if I do so, they start tearing a little bit. I'm not doing that. I'm just gonna spread them hanging out on the towel to dry, and I'm gonna put the rest up on the treehouse. And if you haven't noticed, I started calling this thing Majig here my treehouse. This is the pasta treehouse, and this is where they're gonna hang out to dry. Let's bring this up and over. Put another towel on top and pat dry. I think we're like getting somewhere. So I'm gonna preheat the oven to 400 degrees F. This is exciting because this has been a lot of work. Let's have a look at the bolognese. Just gonna season it one last time. Tell me what you see, Chuck. That looks great. I think it's go time, but there is one issue we have to sort out. And that is the bechamel sauce. It's like a dried up, like thicker skin that kind of appears on the very top. And when you whisk it together, it all gets a, it gets all up in there. And now it's become a little clumpy. So I think a two four, great. I'm going to pour it into a sieve and hopefully that does the trick. That works fantastically. No more clumps, no more clumps. Got myself a new baking dish. This one is nine by 12. Perfect for lasagna and perfect for Marcella. Thickly smear the bottom of the pan with butter, of course, and then one tablespoon of the bechamel. One tablespoon, don't get carried away. Uh, what are you looking for? Exactly. That should work. Line the bottom of the pan with a single layer of the pasta strips. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the ugliest ones first, kind of piecing the bottom layer together because it was the worst pieces of the pasta. Only up to a quarter inch of overlap. Yes, no more than that. So I got the bolognese sauce right here. It is looking beautiful. And I have the bechamel right here. It also looks very nice. And I combine the meat sauce and the bechamel and spread a thin coat onto the pan. Okay, I really hope I'm reading that correctly. Combine the meat sauce and the bechamel together. Okay, I mean, I've never made lasagna before, so I didn't know that, but I am combining both these two beautiful products to make one lovely little thing. Meat sauce goes in to the bechamel. Beautiful things are happening right now. Spread a thin layer onto the pasta. All right, let's hit the pause button for a brief second because I need some grated Parmesan cheese, around two third cup worth. Sprinkle some of the cheese on top, hell yeah. And then we repeat the process. Pasta on top. Okay, you can just rip it off if you have a little overlap and that's perfect, that fits like a glove. Let's get a thin layer of that dynamic duo, bechamel and meat sauce. Grated Parmesan cheese and let's repeat. So if you need to fill in any gaps with broken pieces, go right ahead. And then with whatever is remaining of this, just a very thin layer on top of the bechamel meat sauce. As much as whatever's left, really. Even layer of Parmesan cheese on top. That's my call. And then dots of butter. Dot with butter. Where the hell is the butter? Stay strong. We got this, we got this. You just need to dot with butter. Dot, one. Two dot, three dot, butter has been dotted. So the oven's been preheated to 400 degrees F and this beauty right here needs to go on the uppermost rack until a light golden crust forms on the very top. Should take around 10 to 15 minutes. Hell yeah. Order up. I like that. I liked it a lot. You know, you already pre-cut the slice, why don't you eat it? And empty plate means good eats. That is just a combination of a number of different things that we've learned in the last few months. Put it on display today. You know, it was a hell of a lot of work to get there, but it was the most comforting, feel good thing that I've made this side of the universe. Those strips of pasta in there 
were just smooth and silky, and you see my fork kind of just glide right through them. The meat sauce remains unbeatable. It's, it's just simmering away for four hours, and you can tell. It blows away any other sauce that you're ever gonna make that isn't simmering for four hours. Unrivaled, really. And then you got the creamy, buttery bechamel to boot. It all just melts away in your mouth, including the pasta. And right, the pasta is green. I forgot all about that. You can't really pick up the spinach at all. I mean, I wasn't really expecting to. It's just for show, right? Right? This was Jamie and Marcella. Buon appetito.